Hi friends, happy Fat Tuesday, if that is a, a thing that we say to each other. Uh, Mardi Gras, we heard of that. Uh, Pancake Tuesday, Pancake Day, uh, Carnival Day, whatever word that you may refer to the day before Ash Wednesday, that is what today is. I came across this article from CNN. I'm gonna read you the opening paragraph because I found it to be very poignant. It says, according to historians, Festivities resembling Mardi Gras go back thousands of years to ancient Roman festivals celebrating the harvest season. After Christianity arrived in Rome, it was always there, just Rome adopted adopted it as the state-sanctioned religion. Uh, anywho, after Christianity arrived in Rome, old traditions were incorporated into the new faith and debauchery became a prelude to the Lenten season. This infusion resulted in a hedonistic period of boozing, masquerading, and dancing with a heavy dose of religion. Now, I don't think that's exactly what Christ has in mind for us when we think about sacrificing ourselves, of repenting, of turning away from the worldly ways is this overindulgent festival um, in our homes or on our streets, which are restricted this year because of COVID-19, of course. Um, but that isn't what the Lenten journey is all about. It's not overindulging ourselves and, and stuffing ourselves and getting in all the sins that we can because we plan to, to be a better person over the next 40 days, plus Sundays, so the 40 days is not counted um, in Lent. That is not what it is about. So just think about this passage for a second here as we turn to the time before the incarnation from the Old Testament. Um, this is from the prophet Joel, and this is a little bit of a teaser as tomorrow in our sanctuary, I will be using this passage for the evening service, for the evening message as well. So without further ado, from the prophet Joel in the second chapter. This is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts, come with fasting and weeping and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows, perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Lent is a time of repentance, of a time of removing those things that have distracted and pulled us away from God, those things that we have inadvertently or maybe intentionally replaced God in our lives. Some of us might be at a different place in our lives where we don't pay attention to God as much or, or we're angry with God or we just do what we want and maybe God is far down our priority list or maybe it's just a condition of who we are as individuals and as a collective race, as, as the humanity. Uh, we are sinful and prideful and deceitful. Uh, we turn away from God. But Lent is that intentional season in the liturgical calendar and the Christian season, our Christian world, where we make an over uh, an abundant attempt to turn back to God, to center ourselves upon God. So over the next 40 days plus Sundays, I want to invite you to join myself and many others uh, in our journey of Lent. Uh, specifically, we will be fasting from these videos, which is sort of ironic, right? But much like when we fast during Lent, we might be taking something else on, like what I will be doing. And uh, for this season, I will not be fasting per se from, from food or abstaining from social media, which some of you may be doing, or abstaining from drinking alcohol or, or caffeine or, or just uh, deciding to spend more time with God, taking something on, then I am going to be doing that same thing. I'm gonna be taking on the spiritual practice of journaling, which I have journaled uh, many times before. These are all journals that I have begun. Actually, this one is, is brand new. I haven't even cracked it open yet. But these other four here are journals that I've used in years past. Um, regrettably, they are not full, and many of them begin on Ash Wednesday. Uh, some of them have two years worth of Lent in them, some a little more, but it always seems by the time that summer rolls around, journaling is something that fizzles out for me, and I am, am sad to admit that, but it is the truth. Um, so this year I will be using this journal beginning tomorrow um, to engage in uh, journaling and at a time with God. Uh, in lieu of these videos, we are preparing daily scriptural and hymnal readings. Uh, they will all be available on our church website and our church app. 
along with four reflection questions. Every day the questions are the same and you can use them for your own private time in meditation or prayer or, or journaling. And the questions are basic. They are, what is this passage saying to you about God? What is this passage saying about me? Not Pastor Chris specifically, but you. What is this passage saying to you about you? What is this passage saying about the world around us? And lastly, what is this passage calling me to do? This is that action. Like what, what are you hearing God say to you to how to be, how to change? What are you to do? So those four basic questions are gonna guide us through our Lenten journey as we engage in those scripture readings. What is this passage saying about me, God, the world around me, and what is it calling me to do? Each day I am going to carve out time because I know it takes me about a half an hour to 45 minutes to, to journal. Now, a consequence of that is, a good consequence, is that ultimately I'll have to fast from something because I don't live in a time vacuum where I just have 30 to 45 minutes laying around spare time, right? Uh, that I already am not filling it with doing something. Uh, so it'd probably be for me if I engage in it in the morning. Instead of watching Sports Center with my cup of coffee, maybe I will journal and, and read scripture. Or maybe in the evening I like to watch hockey. Uh, that could be 30 to 45 minute sacrifice there that I'm going to put away hockey for a bit and spend time with God. And it's something that I encourage all of us to do together as we center ourselves and, and gain that relationship, work on that relationship that we have with God and that we... Um, as I have admitted, over time, it wanes for me. Uh, not that I lose faith, but uh, those spiritual practices, those spiritual disciplines that help us to nurture that relationship, they wane. Uh, as you can see by these uh, four journals here that span easily 10 years of time and they are not year round. So it is a practice that I intend to continue way past Lent, and maybe you can even hold, help me hold me accountable. But whatever your Lenten journey looks like, however you intend to engage in your relationship with Christ, uh, maybe it is fasting, giving something up, or maybe it is taking something on. Uh, whatever you do, I hope and pray that it helps you grow closer in Christ. I will be offering two Bible studies, one on the book Savior, which covers the premise of why did Jesus have to die on the cross? So for Monday nights, beginning next Monday, or this coming Monday, the first Monday in Lent, uh, on Zoom at seven o'clock, we'll be looking at the book Savior, and each week we'll look at a different atonement theory, and atonement is the fancy church word for uh, the reconciliation uh, for, for God and, and humanity. Um, how are we made right in that relationship again? So each week, six different theories, uh, seven o'clock on Zoom. Uh, the, the link is available on our website and app. Also Thursdays at 10 o'clock in the morning, I will be leading a Zoom session using uh, Lenten appropriate scripture readings that are uh, using the African Bible study method. No book required, just your favorite translation of the Bible. And that, together we will share how that particular scripture is speaking personally to us. It's a practice of uh, spiritual listening and hearing of God through others and through the word. There are other things available by the other pastors. I encourage you to, to seek that information out and to look on the website. And beginning tomorrow on Ash Wednesday, three opportunities for you to get your ashes from seven in the morning until eight in the, in the morning in the sanctuary. Also from noon to one as a drive through at the church. And also we will be holding an in-person service in the sanctuary for Ash Wednesday. We're receiving communion and the imposition of ashes. And that service so that's seven o'clock along with every Wednesday as well during the season of Lent. And they will also be live streams. So friends, we have so many ways in which we can grow together, that we can be repentant, that we can turn ourselves and recalibrate ourselves upon God. Friends, I hope this message finds you and yours well. As we end here today, I do want to share with you the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, you may have heard of him before. He's one of my favorite uh, saints, even though I'm not Catholic, but uh, we can all learn from other faiths uh, and especially our Catholic brothers and sisters. But this is a prayer for peace, a prayer that we can use for our individual lives. And I think that we can all agree on that our world is in much need of peace. So I invite you to a moment of prayer with me. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, 
to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.